welcome back to the channel. So uh, today I thought I'd share with you um, some of the things I picked up at uh, my local Costco and Walmart and go over some of the um, price disparities that I found between um, some of the products and uh, overall just kind of my opinion on what I think is going on with the, um, the food supply as of right now. So um, obviously what you see here it are just some some staple food items. I mean, some of the things that I have here are things that I got more from like a, a prepping standpoint, um, just kind of some filler food. So, you know, for instance, the ramen, not really something that my family and I uh, consume a ton of, but it is cheap and it stores pretty well and it just makes for uh, a quick and easy meal so um and then um same with probably like these raviolis we don't really consume too much of it but you know it is or this is the ravioli this is the beans but um um yeah it's like the beans and the, the there are raviolis somewhere in here oh, right there um yeah we don't really consume too much of that stuff so it's more of something that's just kind of a shelf stable food it's it's uh cheap so you can buy a lot of it and store it in case things get um, tough. But, um, you know, I would say overall, for the most part, the food, obviously, it's pretty much the same price it's been for the last year. I mean, ever since the inflation started, it hasn't really changed much. Some prices, um, I haven't really seen too much, like, go up in value, um, like, in the last couple months. Um, I've seen, in fact, I've actually seen some things come down. Uh, quite a bit like uh, this chicken for instance um, I think that the Costco chicken canned chicken the six pack was selling for um, $16 $16 something uh, a couple months ago and now it's come down to about 13 um, and it is actually a better deal than the chicken that they had at Walmart so it's really odd I mean you really have to uh, to get the better deal, you have to really be paying attention to what food, um, to what food costs, like what it, what it usually costs and, um, and stuff like that. And the, and the amount of food you're getting and keeping, keeping track of the grams per can. Cause a lot of that stuff I've just been noticing changes the weight, the overall like ounces per unit is changing so you got to kind of keep a close eye on that stuff also another thing that i've been noticing that you got to really keep a close eye on are, are expiration dates um the ex especially at our grocery store i mean they're selling food at um at our grocery store and this isn't like one of the um you know one of the cheaper grocery stores this is kind of one of the upper echelon grocery stores or just the regular grocery stores um where they're selling like milk and a lot of foods that are two days away from expiring. So definitely one of those things you got to keep an eye on. Um, and so they're letting, it seems like they're letting sit, stuff sit on the shelves a lot longer. Um, you know, they're still doing a lot of the stuff where they, they're pushing all the food up to the front to kind of make it look like um, the shelves are full. But in, in fact, there's nothing behind the, the nothing behind the food, um, and then some of the um, aisleways were definitely a lot more sparse than usual, um, and not just in food I noticed, but like all, um, you know in a lot of different uh, aisles, a lot of different categories, like even like kids' toys I noticed like there weren't a lot of toys, so um, who knows what's going on there, but um, yeah, it just it's kind of odd. Um, the amount of, you know, just what's going on with our supply chain. And I know everybody, I, I think I've heard of every theory under the sun and, you know, maybe, maybe everybody's correct. I mean, or I don't know, maybe nobody's correct on it, but um, I definitely think that it's still a better deal that when you go grocery shopping that everybody should be, you should be buying in bulk. If you have a place to store your food, a cool, dry place to store your food, um, Definitely from like an economic standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. You're going to be saving your money in the long run, especially with what the way the food prices are kind of increasingly going up, um, just to kind of a way to get, get ahead of inflation a little bit. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, 
this rice here. Um, the, the price in rice didn't really change. The price in flour has gone up a little bit. Um, these 25 pound sacks of rice, for instance, I believe I'm, see, I'm getting these for 12, about 13 bucks. And then the flour is going for um, the same, I think it's, actually, yeah, this is about 13, these are 12. So pretty much close, close to the same for the 25 pound sacks. Um, and we do consume quite a bit of the flour, the, the thing we consume the most of because we make all of our own bread. Um, and, um, and then the second would be rice. Obviously, I've got some condiments here, like the ranch dressing and the ketchup, and that's mainly because um, I've got three kids and they consume a lot of <laughs> condiments like the ranch and ketchup. So um, I always make sure to get as many of these like, as I can. Um, we're running a little low on that. Um, obviously, the soy sauce. I think I've mentioned this before in one of my um, pantry videos, um, but I think that soy sauce is probably one of the best prepping additions you can have to your cabinet because for one it's cheap so this whole this bottle here was about a little over six dollars and um but the thing with mat uh with um soy sauce is it can mask the flavor of food so if you end up in a situation where maybe like for instance the food that we're getting is get, is just becoming more and more expired and giving a sour taste it's still safe to eat but, um, I mean, this is obviously if things are desperate um, and you need to kind of mask the flavor, soy sauce comes in. The other thing, like, if you have to rely on um, wild game for, uh, you know, to supplement your food source and there's people in the family that don't really like the taste of uh, the, the gamey taste, soy sauce will mask those flavors really easily. Um, and then... Um, the main thing is that it's a very good preservative. So, um, you know, every year I'll usually get like a couple turkeys and um, I always just, I breast out my turkeys, shave the meat up and just make turkey jerky out of it. And the soy sauce is pretty much the uh, main ingredient to the brine that I use to make that jerky. So um, just a good thing. I usually keep about three or four gallons of this of soy sauce on hand. Um, the peanut butter, we go through quite a bit of that. It's still pretty cheap. I think that two pack is uh, maybe $9. The jelly was a little on the pricey side. It was almost $5 um, per jar, but I think that's pretty much what it's been. The, the, the stra strawberry jelly has always been kind of on the, um, on the higher side, but uh, this pasta sauce, we definitely, the spaghetti sauce, we go through a lot of it. We just get the generic stuff and, you know, it would be nice. I mean, I would love to be able to just go ahead and make this myself. I could make it, you know, but it, it's a little, it, it takes a lot of time to, um, it's actually easier. It's easy to make the sauce, but the canning process is quite a process. Um, you know, it takes, it would take us at least a whole day to make up all the sauce and then get it all canned, you know, maybe half a day, something like that. And after everything's said and done, um, you know, you're not saving very much money, uh, but you're getting a better quality sauce. So just one of those things, it's just easier. I mean, we have so much stuff going on, it's just easier to buy it. So like one of these jars is only a dollar twenty. So kind of hard to beat that. Um, yeah, again, the beans, something we do, we do eat from time to time, um, not a whole lot, but yeah, usually with the canned food, the only thing we, we seem to consume a lot of with the canned food is maybe the chicken and uh, the, these tomatoes, but I always get the Cento tomatoes as like a higher quality grade of tomato. Um, the other good thing about the Cento's, are like when I make my pasta sauce, this is usually what I use. Um, so Cento, they also make the San Marzano tomato, which is, which is one of the, the best tomatoes you can get for uh, making pasta sauce. And one of the things that makes these tomatoes good and why is, is actually it's a, it's a really healthy product is because these cans are, are lined with copper. And so you have a tomato that has a very, a, a lot of acidic, acidity to it. Um, if it's not in that copper can, that, that acidity is going to start, like the cheaper grade tomato 
canned tomatoes don't have the copper lining and that acidity will after not very like a short period of time maybe a year will start eating away at the inside of that can and you end up with metal in your um you know uh, metal in your pasta sauce so that's not a good thing so that's one of the main reasons i i get these tomatoes um and also because they're a lot better so um trying to think here i did pick up some of these um these uh little meal ready to eat and only because i'm i've been tempted to want to make some homemade mres and also make a video on this so i started this process a while ago and then i just never got around to finishing it but it is something i want to do because i do like mres and the mres that i have are kind of are getting kind of old and so I'm just getting a little more apprehensive about keeping them um, in my, you know, prepping supplies. And the, you know, and I bought these before MREs, the cost of them went through the roof. And now they're just so expensive. It's just not even, they're just not even worth buying. In my opinion, I mean, a case of MREs is like $180 now. You get 12 meals for hundred and I'm thinking, <laughs> I mean, when I first started buying them, it was, you could get a whole case for 70 and even that was a little pricey. So, um, yeah, the prices are just, and I don't know if those prices are going to come be coming down anytime soon because they've been at that, um, they've been at that price mark for quite a few years now. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that and I'm, I'll do like a, a price comparison and see how cheap I can make, you know, a pretty substantial MRE. And I know like one of the main struggles with these homemade MREs or one of the obstacles that people run into is it's you, it's really hard to find a substitute for the bread that they put in the MREs. Um, so one of the things I'm going to experiment with is I'm going to try and vacuum seal like a flour tortilla and put an oxygen absorber in there and I'm going to see how long, you know, that will will preserve that tortilla before it goes bad. So, you know, but even if I can make an MRE um, meal that lasts, you know, a year, I, hey, I, I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Um, but uh, anyways, that'll, that'll be a, a video for some other day. Um, obviously, yeah, I think I've gone over most of everything here and toilet paper and all that. Um, got some cream of mushroom more uh, uh spaghetti that was but nothing was on sale i also noticed that almost nothing was on sale um yeah i don't know if that's just the day of the week but um yeah the food was scarce um i'll say overall i mean the food was scarce at least at the walmart it was a lot more scarce and uh or sparse whatever um and uh, no good deals i mean I don't know, and, and I keep pretty good track of, because there's only so many things I buy, and so I, I keep a good, really good track on the um, the cost of things, and um, you know, not ridiculously ridiculously expensive, um, but um, you know, just not not cheap either. Definitely no no screaming deals that I notice. So um, definitely, you know, my opinion is to get out there. You know, if you have the space in your house. Uh, buy in bulk, you know, it's uh, It's just a way to get ahead of inflation within the in the food realm um, It's gonna help you save money in the long run. So anyways guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video If you haven't done so, please like the hit the like button and subscribe um, You know my opinions of it as far as like subscribing to these channels um, You know ever since I started making these videos I'm my opinion on um, subscribing to channels is, is changed because now I kind of have a better idea of what it means um, and I'm actually more now that I know um, you know kind of what that means to, to channels um, and just uh, the people who are in charge of the algorithms and the the people who are in charge of um, this social media platform that I'm streaming from right now um, it sends a message to them like when especially with the smaller prepping channels like mine, um, it's kind of a vote. So when you hit that like button, you, you subscribe to my channel, it's kind of like you're sending them a message. It's like sending a vote that, hey, like, hey, we support this idea, this, this 
um, this community. And it showed, and it can send a message to them that, you know, how big we are. And this is something that, um, you know, that, that the people want and, um, which is a good thing. Um, but, you know, and maybe you didn't get something out of today's video and you're kind of like, well, I didn't like it. I, you know, um, uh, you know, I didn't get anything out of it, so I'm not going to subscribe, but, um, subscribing to me, it helps me grow and, and it makes me the next person that might get something from me more likely to see me, um, and just kind of encourage the, um, you know, the, uh, content creators in the prepping community to grow. And we just have more opinion, you know, there's just a, uh, a wider, um, uh, selection of, of prepping channels. So, you know, it's just something that you do that's just going to help grow the community overall. So, um, or don't subscribe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, but uh, yeah, you know, definitely hit the like button, subscribe. It's just something that helps our community overall. So, anyways, guys, I hope you, I hope you liked the video, and I, uh, I appreciate um, uh, all of you who've been giving me such good compliments in, um, in the, uh, in the comment section. So, until the next one, stay prepared. So, um, lighting's a little better, but <clears throat> sound quality isn't as good. Um...